The German Invasion and Occupation of the Netherlands in World War II Can you imagine waking up one morning to the sound of planes roaring overhead, bombs exploding, and gunfire in the streets? This is not a movie scene. It was the reality for the people of the Netherlands on May 10, 1940. German forces had launched a surprise invasion of their country. Let's explore the dramatic and tragic story of the German occupation of the Netherlands during World War II, a story of bravery, resistance, and unimaginable hardship that forever changed the lives of millions of Dutch citizens. Chapter 1. Preparation are you ready for a thrilling ride back to the tense days leading up to the World War II? In 1939, it became clear to the Dutch people that their beloved country might not be able to stay neutral if war broke out. With danger looming on the horizon, the Netherlands began preparing to defend itself against the onslaught of an unknown enemy. Amidst the chaos and confusion, the Dutch government and its citizens sprang into action. Shelters were dug out for the population to take refuge in case of enemy attacks. As tension mounted, the Dutch government announced general mobilization. On August 28, 1939, women bravely stepped up to take over the jobs of the recruited men, while a food rationing card system was set up to ensure everyone had enough to eat. As the preparations continued, the Dutch forces remained on full alert, waiting for the inevitable arrival of war. The clock was ticking, and the Dutch people knew that the storm was coming. Would they be able to weather the storm and emerge victorious on the other side? Only time would tell. Chapter 2. The Queen Left Hold on tight, because we're about to witness a pivotal moment in Dutch history. On the 10th of May, 1940, the German army invaded the Netherlands, and for five days the Dutch army valiantly fought back against the onslaught. However, they were no match for the well-equipped German forces. In the midst of this chaos, Queen Wilhelmina faced a difficult decision stay and risk being captured by the Germans or flee to safety. Ultimately, she was persuaded by Army General Wilkeman to escape to England. The Queen was accused cowardice for fleeing her country in its hour of need. However, little did they know that Wilhelmina would become an important symbol of the fight against Nazi Germany. What would you have done if you were the Queen of the Netherlands? Chapter 3. Full-Scale Invasion Grab your seats as we witness the brutal reality of war. On the afternoon of May 14, 1940, the German Air Force launched a full-scale attack on Rotterdam. The skies were filled with 90 Heinkel 111 bombers of the Kampf Geschwade 54 Totenkopf Squadron, raining destruction and chaos on the city below. The bombs decimated the city, and between 800 and 1,400 residents lost their lives. The old city center was almost entirely destroyed, and a staggering 78,000 people were left homeless. As night fell, the city was still ablaze, with buildings like the Plan C building burning uncontrollably. The destruction was almost unimaginable, and the city would continue to burn for days. With the threat of further bombings on major Dutch cities looming and an ultimatum from Germany, the Dutch government was left with no choice but to capitulate. The following day, General Henry Winkelmann signed the Declaration of Capitulation, officially surrendering to the Germans in the presence of the highest-ranking German officer, General George von Kuschler. Netherlands had fallen. It was a moment in history that left an indelible mark on the country and its people. Chapter 4. Memorial for the Soldiers on May 30, 1940, the Kruiswijk Cemetery hosted a somber gathering to honor fallen Dutch and German soldiers who bravely fought in the Battle of Rotterdam. Representatives from the Dutch Army and the Rotterdam Municipal Executive attended. The joint memorial for both armies is remarkable, but it is the only commemoration of its kind. The memory of the fallen soldiers continues to live on in the hearts of those who honored their sacrifice. Chapter 5. The Nazi Occupation the transfer of power on May 29, 1940, marked a dark moment in Dutch history. Nazi occupation officially began with the transfer of the government from Wehrmacht to Reich Commissioner Arthur Seiss Inquart, a former lawyer and Nazi politician. He was tasked with enforcing Hitler's regime on the occupied territories. The solemn ceremony at the Rettersaal in The Hague was a chilling reminder of the country's new reality. As the Wehrmacht commander transferred his powers to Seiss Inquart, the fate of the Netherlands was sealed. Chapter 6. Redeveloping Netherlands 
On July 15, 1940, the Ordnungsdienst began their mission to rebuild the Netherlands under the leadership of a Dutch army major. The service's existence was not long lived, and by October of the same year, the Reich Commissioner Seyss Inquart decided to transform it into the Dutch Labor Service. Many Dutch soldiers who were once prisoners of war were also released and welcomed back home with open arms, as seen in the footage of their jubilant return. The soldiers were paid their overdue wages and even contributed to a fund for victims of the war. The resilience and determination of the Dutch people during this time is truly inspiring. Chapter 7 – Social Life After the German Invasion Life in the Netherlands after the German occupation was marked by a sense of normality, despite the overwhelming presence of the German forces. With businesses gradually resuming their activities, the Dutch population was left with no other choice but to try and tolerate the situation as best they could. However, underground resistance movements started to organize, which will be explored in later episodes of this series. Subscribe to the channel so you do not miss out on that action. Despite the curfew, social life began to pick up again, and the Dutch people worked to bring back the typical Dutch coziness known as Geiselheid through spending evenings playing games with family and friends. Though television was not yet available, the radio was banned by the Germans later on in the war. Chapter 8 NSB Joins the Nazis the Netherlands, like many other countries, had its own National Socialist Party at the start of World War II. The NSB, a Netherlands First Party, joined forces with the German occupiers as a collaboration party, with their leader, Anton Mussert, assuming that he could politically run the country as part of the new Third Reich. By 1943, over 100,000 people had joined this anti-democratic and authoritarian government. As the war progressed, the NSB became increasingly radical, fascist, and anti-Semitic, leading to a stigma that persisted for decades among those who were considered in the wrong. NSB parades had spectators lining the route and making the NSB Housey salute. T, the WA, the militarized entity of the NSB, was better designated as riffraff in uniform and called the Zwarthmiden or black shirts. They were notorious for their extreme violence towards Jews. Even more chilling, we hear Musert's speech on May 1, 1941, in which he proclaimed a day of unity for the whole of Europe revealing the dangerous and delusional ambitions of the NSB. As we come to the end of our journey through the events preceding World War II in the Netherlands, we were reminded of the resilience and bravery of the Dutch people. Despite the challenges they faced under Nazi occupation, they stood strong and united in their fight against oppression. But our journey is not over. If this video gets 1,000 likes, we will drop a next episode where we delve into the heart of the war, exploring the struggles and triumphs of the Dutch people in the face of one of the darkest periods in human history. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.